Hey guys, my name is Nate, and with Thanksgiving coming this week, I thought we'd recreate a stew I've made in the past, and we're going to try and make some spins on it and make it good. So today what we're going to be doing is making Thanksgiving stew. Okay guys, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be recreating a stew that I've made in the past. This is a recipe based off of my Drunken Thanksgiving stew recipe. Now unlike this one, that one's broth consisted of 75% whiskey bourbon. Now I'm trying to remake this and kind of keep some of the same flavors without having that alcohol content in it um, so that it's family friendly. Um, that belongs to a category of my stews that I like to call drunken stews, where they're primarily made with uh, bourbon. But in this case, we're going to be using some different ingredients to go with it. Now, understanding that this is a Thanksgiving stew, the basis of this is supposed to be you can use leftovers from Thanksgiving, put it in a pot, thicken it up a little bit, and make a nice hearty stew. Um, gotta help you to get rid of the uh, leftovers but in this case we're gonna be making everything for it um, and honestly I've taken it I've taken it camping um, but what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be making it in a slow cooker uh, today uh, rather than in the past I've done it on a stove but I can I know you could also do it over a low a low fire for three hours or on the stovetop for three hours um, and I'll explain why the three hours later. So, what's going to be in this is we're going to be using uh, turkey meat. I'm going to be using turkey breasts. Uh, we're going to be using uh, sweet Italian sausage. Um, I would also, I was going to try it with sage sausage, which is generally commonly used in stuffing, but I couldn't get my hands on it. Uh, <laughs> what we're also going to be doing is using celery, carrots onions um if you if you're like one of my viewers who does not like onions um leave it out if you so choose um one of the other vegetations we're going to be using is sweet potatoes you can use any potato for this but sweet potatoes when cut the way i'm going to be cutting them and slowly cooked for three hours they actually dissolve and become part of the stew's broth and kind of thicken it up uh, to a consistency that I like. Um, now, because I like my stews to be very meaty and structured, um, but this doesn't have any beef in it, we're going to be using, um, we're going to be using mushroom broth because I feel like beef broth would throw off the flavor a little bit. Um, and when I tend to not use beef broth when I'm cooking primarily with poultry or pork, I tend to try and use other things. Um, and on top of that, to kind of add it to the meaty quotient, I'm going to be using dried porcini mushrooms. Um, you can find these in your, uh, generally speaking, you find them in the uh, produce section of your grocery store. You just have to look around. Uh, they're not cheap but they're not expensive. Uh, this amount was about six bucks uh, and that was cheap for dried mushrooms. There were some that ranged double to three times this. Um, also included in this we're going to be using, um, so we're going to use craisins as well. Um, I do eventually want to try this also with cranberry sauce but I figured craisins were going to go nicely unless I have used craisins in the past with it. Um, we're also going to be putting green beans into it. I'm using canned. Um, they were just easier when I went camping and they came out nicely in it. But, um, and we're going to be doing it that way. Also going to be using chicken broth and vegetable broth. Um, well, chicken stock to help thicken it up and vegetable broth uh, and vegetable broth to kind of give it some more space as kind of a filler as needed. Um, various spices. Um, 
are going to be included as well. But what we're going to do is uh, get going on the setup. Okay, guys. So what we did was we're going. What you're going to want to do is break down your veggies. Uh, so for the porcini mushrooms, what you're going to want to do is just break them down to small spoonable sizes. Uh, normally, if you're going to cook with these in any other dish, you want to hydrate them. But as they're going to be sitting in a uh, liquid for three hours, a hot liquid for three hours, I figure that's okay that they aren't sitting. Um, in this bowl, we have our mirepoix, which is we have onions, celery, and carrots. Uh, the carrots been the carrot and celery been roughly chopped, and I want the onions to be nice and diced down fine. Now the sweet potato in the center here. I'm not going to pick this up and show you because it is precariously piled. Um, what you want to do is get them into nice thin. Um, pieces so about half moon. There's going to be some other ones, but about this size, um, about a quarter inch thick. Um, and what the reason again being is because as they slowly cook, they will break down and become part of the broth. Now what we're going to do is move on to the protein. Okay, guys. Now to brown the meats. So. We'll go over medium heat. We will put a nice heavy skillet. Add a little bit of olive oil. Let that heat up a bit. And while it's heating up, a nice heavy spatula. Once it gets nice and hot, or as it's starting to get hot, we start adding in some of the turkey. I'm using just sliced up chicken breast or chicken cutlet. Uh, sorry, turkey breast or turkey cutlet. I do apologize. Um, and what we're gonna do is just get this nice and browned up, because uh, what we want to do is get a nice sear on this to add flavor. Actually, what we do is up the heat a bit. I knew about half of it. This was about a pound of turkey. And what we'll do is, so I don't stew it in its own juices, I'm going to do this in batches. So I'm going to start part of it on the lower end and then start adding it. Okay, so. Um, what we're going to do is I put the little crock pot on the wall, and we're actually going to do a little cheaty way of sweating down the veggies. So I'm just going to kind of add these in. We'll do some stir them up and add a little bit of salt. So what we'll do is add the salt to help bring out the moisture. Never too early to add the pepper. We can add more later. Give these a nice little quick stir, and what we'll do is we'll let these sit down for a little bit and kind of sweat down. Okay, guys, uh, so what we're going to do is, um, now that these are kind of browned up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them off the heat and I'm going to move them to the uh, veggies that have been kind of on, actually up to the high in the uh, crock pot just to kind of help soften them up. Uh, if they don't fully sweat out, that is fine. Uh, they will be adding a flavor to it, but what we'll do is add this to it. Um, if it's, if there's still pink in it, that's fine. This is, uh, this is gonna cook, that's gonna cook through. Um, after this, we'll move on to the sausage. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is adding in the sweet Italian sausage. The reason I'm using sausage in this is because, well, it's used in like that to be in there because that has the pad, and I do not want that is not goodies. So. I'll have to wash my hands, that's fine. 
Uh, so what we'll do is we'll break this up, break it down, and brown this as well. Um, Again, the reason why I'm saying the reason I would use this is because often you use some sort of sausage in stuffing. Um, and when I cooked this before, or when I cooked something similar to this before, the stuffing, well, the uh, sausage came out really nicely in there. Uh, if you want to use stuffing that you were using at home, that is good. Uh, in fact, the breading in there may also help thicken up the stew. In this case, I'm just using straight up sausage. And again, this is going to be over medium to high heat. And what we'll do is we'll get this nice and browned up. And uh, I'll bring it back when I have this nice warmed up, uh, nice and browned up. Okay, so this is about the doneness that we want. Um, so I'm going to kill the heat for now. And then what I'm actually going to do is put this in the pan and then I'm going to add a little bit of the stock to kind of deglaze it because um, I want all those little nice bits at the bottom. So I'll bring you back when I deglaze. Okay, so what we're going to quickly do is put this over high heat. Uh, now what we're going to do is once the pan starts to heat up a bit, we're then going to go nice and hot. And then we're going to add, in this case I'm going to be using, you could use any liquid, but in this case I'm going to be using the, mu the mushroom broth. Now this action is called deglazing. Um, just use a little bit of it, uh, just to cover the bottom of the pan. And then what you want to do is just scrape the bottom of the pan. Do not do this with non-stick uh, because you will ruin the stick. But what we're going to do is get this nice and going, and then once we get the majority of the bits nice and deglazed, we're going to move it to the slow cooker and we're going to start getting it, uh, getting the stew rolling. Okay, and then what, what we're going to do is add that liquid in and try and get as much of it out as possible. Um, I'm just working under a low section because of just where the plug is. And then what we're going to do is start adding in everything else. Uh, so what we're going to be using is starting to add in the broths. So we're going to be using the, we're going to vegetable broth on last, but what we're going to start with is use the chicken stock. Stock is generally made with bone, which means it has collagen in it, and we want that collagen. Because that collagen will make this finger looking good, even though if you eat your stew with your fingers, well, that's weird. So what we'll do is we're going to add about, one's about 32 ounces um, of vegetable stock. And then we're going to be adding in the mushroom broth. Well, that about 16 ounces, so about a cup. And then we'll go. For now, what we're going to do is we're going to go about 16 ounces of that. Some of the vegetable broth as well. About another cup of that. I'm just eyeballing this. And I have the crock pot on high. Uh, then what we're going to do is start putting in the other vegetation. Uh, we're going to add in all of the chain mushrooms. So that's about a quarter cup of shredded dried porcini mushrooms. I'm going to just throw that into there. And now this is three uh, sweet potatoes. I'm gonna, I've had this precariously placed for a little while, so what we're going to do is just 
be careful when doing this. All the liquid isn't too hot, so we're going to just work that down into there. Kind of work down the potatoes. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is adding in a can of green beans. You can use fresh, I'm just going with canned for ease, and that's why I did last time as well. Uh, and this is a 14.5 ounce can of just generic can. What we're going to do is add in a half a handful, I don't want to go with all of it, but we'll go with a ha half a handful. Of craisins, add a little bit more in there. Just hopefully these will add in a nice bit of sweetness. And we will also add in two, one to two bay leaves. Um, at the end, remember to take these out. These are not good after they've been cooked. So we'll just kind of tip that into there. And we'll add those afterwards. Now every every stew should have at least a little bit of time in the pot. I mean, of course. Uh, about a tablespoon we'll go with. And some smoked paprika. Adds a nice little punch to it again. Another, about a tablespoon. I, I tend to eyeball these. A uh, full bit of a kick. Some cayenne. Just a couple dashes. I'm going to go with some dried minced garlic. Uh, just to give some nice garlicky flavor. Mm, only about a tablespoon. Just to add a little bit more celery to the to this, uh, some celery salt. Just a dash, not too much more than that. And again, my personal favorite spice in the entire world, ground cumin. This is, so we'll be adding in about a tablespoon, if not a little bit more. That will add to the meatiness. And then what we'll do is uh, we will try, we'll just add and mix this in. And if we need to add a bit more moisture or liquid to this, we will. Um, this will, these uh, potatoes will boil, well, these will reduce down. Again, I said I have this on high, and once, and we'll just get those spices in there. We will come back and mix this part of the way through, and so let's add in a bit more broth. Why don't I add a bit more of the mushroom broth to it, just to kind of top it off. And again, I do like that nice meaty flavor of mushrooms. Now, if you do want to make this a drunken stew, what you do is instead of the uh, two cups of vegetable and mushroom broth that I've added to this, um, add bourbon. Yeah and let it cook for three hours. Just remember, not all the alcohol cooks out. Um, a lot of my friends do like that one, and I've done it on a camping trip before, um, which is when I kind of came up with this recipe. Um, and as I said, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clamp the lid on this, and uh, we will let it cook for three hours. Once it starts to boil, I will reduce it to low, and we'll let it simmer, and we're gonna go do other things while this is cooking. And uh, Probably for a good, uh, it's this type of stew would be good for a weekend after Thanksgiving, hanging out with your family. Okay guys, so this has been kind of going for three hours. The um, sweet potato didn't do what I expected it to, but I think that's because when I originally did this, I did this on a propane stove, which caused it to boil and uh, basically disintegrate them. But either way, these are fork tender. Um, if I want to get the same result, what we're probably going to end up doing is uh, leaving this on low overnight to see if it uh, if it tenders, if basically those become part of the broth. But this looks really good and we kind of want to eat. Um, and I mean, as I said, it looks good. It's been cooking for about three hours on high on the uh, crock pot. Um, but as I said, what we'll do is we'll drop down to low. Um, but what I'll do is dish it out and, well, as we do in a test kitchen, we're going to test it. So, 
all the the mushrooms, the turkey. I don't want to keep wanting to call it chicken, but it's turkey, the sausage, the veggies. It all looks so good. Um, so now we're gonna give it a quick test. Uh, as I said, and I'll try to remember to comment down below um, how it is after a full night. <laughs> which would probably put it at like about 12 hours of just sitting um, on low just to simmer but let's go for taste go for broke on this and we'll see how it tastes More of a consistency of soup, but again, that could be because of how long it's been cooking. So it definitely could be thicker, um, texture-wise, but nevertheless, it has a good taste to it. I definitely would recommend making this. little crazy and bites are really good so let's see how a piece of oops, sweet potatoes which oh, really softened up that's really good I mean all the flavors have kind of come together um, and the broths were a good decision on that so Everything is, is really good, and as I said, give it a try. Um, make your modifications on it. If you make it, let me know down in the comments below. Heck, if you film it, link it to me. And, well, have a good day. This has been uh, Thanksgiving Stew.